So the more important tweet is the one that followed that one. Right. Because I don't even get when it. When you read between the lines, and you don't have to read all that deep between the lines, 133 million, three years fully guaranteed, but I need an agent. Now, here's what I've managed to discern. That it, when I first saw it, I thought, oh my gosh, does he have a contract? Has he has he negotiated a three-year, $133 million contract with the Ravens that we didn't know about? Is it just a matter of time before they announce it? What he's referring to there is that the offer that he rejected would have paid out $133 million fully guaranteed over the first three years. That That's what he means. There were other guarantees that would have kicked in as the contract unfolded. Continued, right. But that was, that was the deal. So regardless of what he did or didn't reject, his point is I was able to get them to make an offer that I refused to accept without an agent of that magnitude. So I don't need an agent. If I can get the Ravens to offer me $133 million fully guaranteed over three years, I don't need an agent. That's the message that he's sending there. So the broader indication is as he goes into a, a very delicate minefield if he even knows how to open the gate and step into it because you know, I, I can't imagine anybody without representation trying to navigate all of the various things that go on when you try to get teams to maybe bring you in for a visit and then maybe sign you to an offer sheet or maybe trade for you when you are a franchise tag player non-exclusive and can talk to any team that has a first round pick this year and next year and maybe explore a trade you need an agent now who has the relationships, who can pick up the phone, who can get to a level of comfort, can negotiate the contract, come up with the teams that may be interested, try to make something happen where you get a team that that is serious about pursuing Lamar Jackson. As I said last week, and I'm not changing my position here, he needs an agent now more than ever, and it's sad that he doesn't get it, and it's only hurting him. That that's See, I really hope I get to the point where I just don't care anymore and say, fine, fine, fine. Go ahead and screw your life up. Fine. Don't get paid for everything you've done and everything you're going to do. Go ahead and play year to year. I mean, because when we, when we try to help him, what happens? People are like, you hate Lamar. Why? You're trying to help the agents. You're just trying to help pr pursue and preserve your flow of information. That's the only reason you're doing it. You're just trying to help Whoa. the agents. You don't, you don't care about Lamar. If we didn't care about Lamar, we would sit back and say nothing yeah. and let this disaster continue to play or out. Or maybe be like because those people who yell at us and be like, what are the you? agents later? Yeah, yeah, you're right, Mike. I, I'm with you. Or yell at the people that are yelling at us and be like, wait, wait, does the, actually – we're doing something that we think – well, not that we think. We know. We know is positive, Lamar. You're wanting him to go down some path of craziness that has proven not to be tried and true and is, is as well orchestrated as having an agent, but you think you're right in that, and I want to go, no, you're actually – gambling with somebody else's life that's easy to do and talk about i don't think exactly. you care about lamar jackson we are the ones that care about him we're the ones that have been around the nfl for a long long damn time we're the ones that have known big time awesome nfl quarterbacks and they all got agents because like you said it's there's a ton of details that go into this i don't know anybody in the business that thinks this is a good thing for lamar i mean nobody it's it, it's it's ridiculous I, it really is. He's stubborn. I don't know what else to say. You know, it's part of the reason he's an awesome football player. But, yeah, there's money being left on the table everywhere. It's crazy, you know. And, yeah, he sends out, you know, emojis like that. I just – I don't even know what to think. I, I know what I said was true, and he sent out the eye-rolling thing. It's true, 100%. So, you know, I, I just I'm, – I'm frustrated in the fact that, yes, it's like we're watching a horror story here. Like, it's just going down, and you're going, oh, my gosh, is this going to happen? He's screwing himself over, and I don't understand why. And uh, he should just have more money in the bank at this point, and uh, we shouldn't be still having this conversation that we're having right now. Two, two points. You mentioned having more money in the bank. Here's the reality. Josh Allen has made more than $41 million more than Lamar Jackson over the last two seasons because Josh Allen did his deal after three years. He has an agent. They got the deal done. They knew when to say yes. And that $41 million that that Josh Allen has made, that, that's, that money is never going to be matched 
That's never coming back. Those two years are gone forever. Josh Allen is into the next year of his second contract, and he's another year closer to his third contract. Lamar Jackson has postponed by two years his second contract, and he's missed out on the $41 million that Josh Allen has made and banked. And, yes, he's paid agent fees, but but 97% of $41 million is is a hell of a lot more valuable than 100% of nothing. So that's one point here. Yep. And the other side of it, you know, these people that are cheering him on, you hit the nail on the head. We love it when guys bet on themselves because it's entertaining as we sit back and watch. These folks are bystanders at the craps table. And Johnny High Roller is there. Yeah, right. And he's betting on himself. Right, right. And we're rooting for him. Yeah. This is great. Roll those dice. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Right. Oh, oh you sauce? lost. It didn't work out. Yeah. Sucks for you. Yeah, right. All right, we're going to go to this other. We're, we're going go to the other table and watch something now. over there. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Yeah. It does. You got people arguing. You go, I don't know what you're arguing. We're, we're, we're again, sticking up for Lamar. We might be getting animated and, and frustrated because it, it is frustrating. And, and you know, to, to that, again, I mean, here we are, you know, close to the official start of free agency, even though we know it unofficially started. I mean, I, I, I again, haven't But for heard. him, it starts at four. He can't talk to – but see, that, 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 see that's, that's another reality. thing. Peter King made this point right. on Friday. Peter King made this point. Okay, even though he officially can't talk to anybody until today at 4 o'clock Eastern, if he had an agent, that agent would have been in Indianapolis two weeks ago laying the foundation for what happens at 4 o'clock Eastern today. Trying to leverage relationships to get somebody, even if you're not interested, can you do me a solid here and act like you're interested? Is there a way we can do something here? Because I think just with a little push here, maybe one of these other teams will come out of the woodwork and maybe put together an offer sheet. Can you help me out here? I mean, that's where, see, and I understand, look, if if I was 21, 22, 23, 24 years old and my focus was football and I don't understand the business side of it, I wouldn't even begin to comprehend what's happening and how complicated it is. It took me 20 years in the business to even get to the point where I can semi-coherently explain how it works. So it's just, it's sad that, and, and really, I mean, I refuse to relent on this point, even though we're caught in this weird spot where people think we hate Lamar and we want something bad to happen. We want something good to happen. We want him to have someone who shepherds him through this very difficult process. We want him to understand before it's too late. And the problem is it's already too late. That's the core here. It is that stubbornness. He doesn't want to admit he was wrong directly or indirectly. So he's going to continue to double down and triple down. And it's sad because the $41 million over the last two years, is gone, and it's never coming back. The endorsement opportunities that were there are gone, and they're never coming back. And go ahead. Go ahead. Somebody make a clip of this, and, Le- and uh, you know whether it's LeBron James or somebody else with a, a gif that Lamar uses to express disagreement, it's the truth. It is 100% true. Look at the endorsements he has and ask yourself, ask yourself, is a guy who was the MVP in the second year of his career – is this really the portfolio of sponsorships that this guy should have? Or should he have a hell of a lot more yes. than that? Patrick right. Mahomes was the MVP the second year of his career. And and I, I remember they had to del- deliberately slam the brakes. There were so many opportunities for him. Um, so uh, you, you got to have somebody who knows how to get the deals done that are on the table and somebody who knows how to go out and find deals that aren't on the table. That's what an agent does. And you may resent having to pay them a percentage of the money that you think you've earned, but they're the ones helping you line up these opportunities that otherwise you just can't line up on your own as proven by the fact that Lamar Jackson is woefully behind some of the other stars of the sport when it comes to what they're making off the field. Yeah, that's simple. And and remind I'd like to remind people, and again, not, not that you have to settle on this, but you know, 133 through the first three years, and practically more than that, is is the one of the greatest contracts in the history of football. You know, the, that that's that's also there's this. Yeah, why didn't he sign it? There's just great this, job. You yeah. negotiated it for yourself. Why didn't you take it? Right, and it probably would have been more money than that. You know, because yeah, it was three years, 133. Where oh yeah, realistically they could get out after that, right? With like an 80 million dollar dead cap hit. Okay, so they're not. So it's going to go into another year and you're and more money. 
right? So that's where, and it's just it's just an obsession with the. It seems like the Deshaun Watson con- contract. I I don't get it, but yeah, you said it right, Mike. I mean, there's three active MVPs in football right now. It's him, Rodgers, and Mahomes, right? It's all there's been, and he. You know, like you said, Mahomes is everywhere. It's Netflix specials. He's got the, he's got a commercials for everything. You know, Rogers. It's it's whatever he wants, and he had that huge State Farm deal forever. Um, but yeah, it's just dropping the ball here, and it is frustrating. And and then also on top of that, I mean, you know, that I don't know is is somebody realistically going to get involved in the conversation with Lamar? Do you think that's going to happen? You know, what's your gut on that, Mike? Do you think a Washington? starts to flirt with them a little bit or somebody else that we're not thinking of gets in and gets in a phone call with Lamar today. Washington is the one that I've continued to keep an eye on. Now they've done some deals over the past couple of days. It may have burned up, you know, a big chunk of the cap space they created when they extended the Deron Payne contract. So they may have to do some other things because if you're going to do a deal like this, it does take a significant amount of cap money. If it's going to be a five million or excuse me a five-year fully guaranteed contract you need to have about 20 25 million in cap space you can activate right away to structure it in a way that it that it works under the rules of the cba and they could create some cap space but you have to have from the day you sign under the offer sheet you have to have the cap space in place to do that deal and it has to stay there until the moment that the situation's resolved and the Ravens would have five business days to match. So I I'm fascinated by the possibility the commander's doing it, but I also, I can't help but wonder whether or not Steve Bishotti, the owner of the Ravens would match a five-year fully guaranteed offer made by Daniel Snyder. Anybody else? All right. Sorry. Too rich for my blood. Off you go. I'll take the two first round picks. If it's Snyder, and it's you know given the proximity, yeah, given the attitude the that right. the other some of the other owners have, uh, we'll we'll just we'll just go ahead and match it. And how can the other owners be mad at Steve Bashotti if all he's doing is exercising his right to match the contract that one of the other owners gave to Lamar Jackson? Yeah, uh, I know. I, I mean, I, I've certainly we've talked about that possibility. I don't know what to think there as far as Daniel Snyder. I could also see him like if he you know, is wanting to sell the team. Maybe he doesn't want to leave the next owner with a superstar quarterback that he didn't get to benefit from either. You know, he's a little but all. He can, he can take the credit. Yeah, you're right. I guess he, he can, can take, take the, the credit. credit. You're right. Team's better because of me. I know, I know. But they, I don't know if he'll feel a whole lot better if they're in the NFC Championship game and you go, well, they're in the NFC Championship game because you're not there. They finally got some, you know, uh, dysfunction out of the building. Yeah, yeah, but, but you're right. I, I don't know what to think there. I, I'll be shocked. I've heard nothing tangible to think that there's another team out there laying in the weeds or anything like that. And I think it's just going to continue to sit here and be status quo with Lamar. Um, and it's going to be Ravens or nothing when it's all said and done. But, but again, if he had an agent, all this could have been done weeks ago. And you would know who's there. You would know who's ready. You stoke that sense of competition just like they did last year with Deshaun Watson. It felt like a game was being played in March of last year when you've got the Saints and the Panthers and the Falcons and the Browns all clamoring to try to get him. It was exciting. What's going to happen? Who's he going to sign with? Who's out first? Who's out second? Oh, he's whittled it down. It was like watching a reality TV show. It was entertaining. It was far more entertaining than standing at the craps table watching some guy gamble with his own money. That's for damn sure. And, and uh, you know, the Browns get kicked out, and then all of a sudden they're back in. Wait, the Browns are back in? How are the Browns back in? And that's where that five-year fully guaranteed contract came from. You need an agent to set it up. You need an agent to make it work. You need an agent to even get to the point where you can have meaningful conversations. Because, Chris, let's say 4 o'clock comes around today. And and let's say that that there's a team out there that's been – waiting quietly for this moment to pounce. First of all, you got to get in touch with Lamar Jackson. Now, I would assume they work through the union. The union's having their meetings right now uh, this week in, in Maui, but you know, they're, 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 by, by 4 o'clock, everybody will be awake in Maui. You can get somebody on the line, but you know, it's just not as easy. It adds steps. you got to get his attention. Then you got to negotiate. you got to negotiate with a guy who I believe, Chris, doesn't, think negotiation is necessary I think that's been the core problem he just believes all I have to do is sit back and say I was the 2019 MVP I'm one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL and he's right but then the next step is just put on the table what I want why should I have to ask for anything why should we have to go back and forth you should just give me what I want 
And I think that's been one of the big reasons why he hasn't gotten a deal done. At some point, he's got to do a contract with somebody. That's the reality. Whoa. A deal has to get done somewhere, or it's going to be year to year with the Ravens, and then he becomes an unrestricted free agent, and he does a deal with somebody at some point after that, yeah. if he ever does one. Well, uh, that that's where you know we, you and I, went back to you know last week in our arguing session there, and and the fun we had around this conversation is just that, yeah, I mean it's it's there's it, it's it's I think part of the reason why. I think some teams probably were like, okay, wait, yeah, we're not interested in Lamar because they just were like, oh, they've heard the the horror stories like we've heard a little bit to where they go, oh, yeah, maybe we like the player, but I don't know. I mean, can we ever get it? Can we ever really get the deal done with them? I think there's part of that, too, that probably led to a little bit of the, the disinterest in Lamar that, you know, we weren't quite expecting. Uh, just the, all that comes along with that is is a – it's a tough situation, uh, and and I think that's why Baltimore probably goes non-exclusive franchise tag because they're going. I don't know. I, we don't have faith he can get a contract done with anybody. So let's just put this one out there and not give him an extra free thirteen million dollars on top of what we you know can do with the non-exclusive franchise tag. See, I'm. I, I think it's got the potential to be a very interesting story, and I always root for a great story. I like the idea that someone will pursue him. I like that someone will give him the contract he wants, and he gets what he's trying to get without having to go out and hire an agent, but it's much harder to do, and there is a very real chance that no one pursues him. He signs no offer sheet, and then he and the Ravens are back at the point where they're staring at each other, waiting for someone to 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 to, to cave in and – you get to July 17 because the 15th lands on a weekend this year. July 17 is the deadline for doing a long-term deal. You get to the next day, and where are you? One year, $32.4 million. And if I'm Lamar Jackson, I'm not playing for $32.4 million on a one-year deal. I say to the Ravens, I want forty five on a one-year deal. Because after the deadline comes and goes, you can't do a multi-year deal. Yeah, but they can give a sweetener. But you can still do a one-year deal for any – they can give a sweetener. In the past, we've seen teams say if you reach a certain – performance level we won't apply the franchise tag that happened with guys like I think Albert Hainsworth and Lance Briggs but you can you can say we'll pay more than 32 four that that is permissible under the CBA and that may be where this fight ultimately lands and you made a great point and this is something that you know I, I've tried to acknowledge as it would explain why teams aren't interested if you do become the new employer of Lamar Jackson and you want to keep him for the balance of his career and you do a five-year deal, one of the things you have to acknowledge, before too long, we're going to be at a point where we, re we need to renegotiate. We need to do business with him. And look at how the Ravens have struggled to do business with him. We don't want to be in that situation. That's we prefer a, to live yeah. in a world where I know exactly who to call. I press the button on my phone. It's somebody I talk to every other day who represents five, six, seven, ten of our players, and we can we can do whatever we need to do. We know how to get these deals done, and it's not a headache. It's not so different than what we're used to doing. People who do business a certain way like to do it that way. They don't like these unexpected twists and turns that require so much time and effort and consternation. And, and again, I, if I was 25, I would not understand that. I only understand it because I've been doing this and covering this sport for more than 20 years. Yeah, I, I agreed. I, I agreed, and I yeah, I, I'm, I'm. That's the point I was trying to make. That's exactly right. That it's just it's all that goes into it. I think could scare some teams too. And as we know, the NFL people in front offices and all that. Hey, yeah, it's their job. It's their business. It's their livelihood, and they're conservative by nature, anyways. So a situation like this is literally like crazy to them, and that's what I think would scare teams off from maybe wanting to go down the Lamar road and, and what all that could you know entail and, and have to deal with uh, over the next few years. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.